so much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview, sponsored by 1-800-DialDJs.com and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and home shopping network, capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. The vet Nicole Brown has been on TV shows opposite Hugh Laurie, William Shatner, and Larry David, and in movies opposite Scarlett Johansson, Jennifer Hudson, Eddie Murphy, Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., and Gerald Butler. Heck, she started her career by signing a contract as a Motown Records artist. But when my daughter saw her in the cast of Community, alongside Chevy Chase, who she loved in Christmas Vacation, all that mattered was she was on Drake and Josh. So, <laughs> Yvette Nicole Brown, star of Drake and Josh and the new NBC Thursday night sitcom Community, airing Thursday nights at 9.30. Welcome to Mr. Media. Hi, Mr. Media. Thanks for having me. I love that intro. I love that your daughter loves Drake and Josh. That's awesome. Absolutely. She was very excited, and she's watching you in Community, too, although not live. We're watching it on delay because it's a little okay. late for her. But. Yes. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I'm really honored. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, you, uh, you started your career as a singer, as I mentioned, and I kind of wondered, considering where you are now, was there a particular twist or a person or something that happened that you know, gave you, put you in this position that, you are, that you're in now? To move from music to, to acting. You know, it's funny. I, I got my record deal when I was a teenager and went to college and all that and then moved to L.A. and the music industry had changed. And I'm kind of a PG gal, and the music industry kind of went a little too R for me. <laughs> so um, I decided, eh, I, can't, I can't sing about those things. And so I thought, well, maybe I'll just, you know, try to do some commercials, because as a kid, I always loved commercials. Got a commercial agent, and it just started to take off. And a lot of the, the TV work I've done has been because someone saw me in a commercial and thought I was funny. So you just never know how things are going to be orchestrated in your life. And so that's how I made the transition. It was like almost you know, effortless, which I know sounds horrible because people are struggling to make it as an actor, but it really just kind of worked out for me. So, yeah, so well, I, and and I still a, get to sing sometimes in some of the shows I do. Well, and i got to say that there's a great uh, picture of you on your, on your personal website of you, I guess, doing a Hamburger Helper commercial, and, and you, the, the caption is, yes, that is the, the person behind the Hamburger Helper hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cute. I like that. Thank you. Thank um, you. Was there, has there been someone, though, along the way who kind of saw you and said, ah, you know what, I know exactly what you're right for, and, or has it just been you know, one job after the other, one well, leads to the some, next? There's been some great people that have, have blessed me throughout my career. Robbie Reed is one of them. She's a casting director. I, my first thing I ever did was this show called Girlfriends, and I, I didn't have an agent. I had no credits. I sent a postcard to Robbie Reed going, hi, if you ever have anything I'm right for, please think of me, thinking she'll, she'll never call. The next week she called and said, hey, we have a part for one of the girls' sister. Can you come in? I had nothing. There was no reason that she should have called me in. And I booked the part. It was two episodes, a big, big role on Girlfriends. So there's been people like that that have kind of peeked into my my career and kind of brought me in, you know, unbeknownst. um, Ben Stiller cast me in Tropic Thunder, I think, from a commercial. I didn't even audition for that part. So it's really? like there's been little people like that. I mean, little people. Ben Stiller's not a little person, but <laughs> there's been people in the industry that have like seen something I've done and go, okay, well, let's give this girl a try. And that's you know, that's unheard of. It's just been amazing. What do you? I mean, do you think there's something about you? Uh, I mean, you, you you seem even now as we're talking to just be filled with energy, very positive. Oh. Uh, I don't know if there's anything about me so much as um, I'm just very grateful, and maybe people can feel that I'm really happy to be wherever I am. Like, I'm overjoyed to be talking to you right now. Like, you know, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I want to talk to Mr. Media, you know. So I think <laughs> maybe that excitement they get, and, you know, it, it, maybe that's why they, they, they hire me. I don't know. It, I, I think it's a, a blessing from God, honestly. If I have to say what it is, it's, that's what it is. But um, very, I'm very grateful, and I hope that that's what comes through and, and is why work is coming. Now, generally, it seemed to me uh, that you play smart women most of the time, but your character on Community, well, she's not exactly the brightest bulb in the room. Well, I think she's smarter than she appears. I think that her whole life, she's been married. The backstory is that she was married like 15 years to this guy who left her, and she's always been the, the kind, sweet, homemaking type person. And I think she's repressed some of her, her intellect and kind of, pushed down the, the strength that she has in order to stay in this marriage with a guy that was wrong for her. So now she's asserting her energy and asserting her, 
her forcefulness, and I think we're going to find out that she's got a lot more going on. I think her politeness may make her seem like she's not that that smart, but she's she's a smart cookie. On the in the sec, I think it's the second episode that aired last week. Uh, mm-hmm. Your character uh, gets involved with a silent protest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was very funny. And she start at first you think, yeah, she's not too bright and then you know, you see that there's something more at work there. Um Yeah, I think she's but, not savvy. I think she hasn't experienced a lot of life. I think it's more that. She's more sheltered than mm-hmm. you know what you know what I mean? Like what she doesn't understand, but once she gets the swing oh, this is how we do it? Okay, we're gonna do it this way then. She just needs to be taught how to do things, you know? All right. And what's ahead for her in the coming weeks? Um, we're gonna find out that Shirley has there's some some flaws that she has, like she may or may not have a gossip problem that is toxic. Um, <laughs> she may be a busybody. Um, there's a couple of things coming up where we're like, oh, sure, she may have a violence issue. <laughs> I think that was hinted at um, in, the, in the pilot, that she may or may not be a little violent when she's coerced or, or, or uh, pushed. So we're going to see that she has a darker side. It's not just pumpkin, sweetie, and how are you today? It's going to be some other stuff coming up for her. Now, this is a show that has a cast of some very funny people, Joe mm-hmm. McHale, uh, Chevy Chase, uh, Ken Jeong, who I'm, mm-hmm. I just think is hysterical. But when the cameras are not running, who in the cast makes everyone laugh, or do they? Everybody. Really? Donald Glover is wickedly funny. Danny Pudi, wickedly funny. Like, it's just, everybody knows the big names, and the big names are amazing, but there's some little stealth performers in this show that you guys are going to be just amazed with in the next coming weeks when people get to really show what they can do. So we all just sit around and crack jokes and we sing. Nobody has a filter. No one, no, no one is, uh, has any shame. <laughs> so any joke <laughs> is fair game. They'll prat falls. All of it happens behind the scenes. So it's been a, a really fun experience. Now, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm thinking that uh, based on your, your big uh, resume of, of uh, TV and film roles, that you get offered quite a bit. And I'm kind of wondered... You know, the, the phone rings, uh, your agent, or you get a call saying, hey, there's this sitcom, and it's going to it's gonna star Joel McHale, the guy from Talk Soup. What makes you respond to that positively? I mean, it, it, on paper, it doesn't really sound like it's a great idea. Well, I love the soup, and I, lo- I believe that I knew, uh. I knew that Joel was very, very smart and very funny off the top of his head. I knew that about him going in because I have friends who were stand-ups who were stand-ups and they knew Joel and I asked about them. Aside from the Joel McHale part, which was enough for me, I read the script and laughed out loud. And, you know, you read stuff sometimes. You're like, okay, that's funny. Okay, that's funny. But when your body has an involuntary reaction to something on a, a written page, you're like, I, I got to go in for this. You know what I mean? It was like a no-brainer. And then when you find out Chevy Chase is involved and the Russo brothers are directing, it's like, okay, Dan Harmon wrote it. Okay, I'm in. I'm in. You know? So it was an easy, it was an easy decision to make. Now, my daughter will never speak to me if I, if, I don't, if, if I don't ask you before you go about Drake and Josh. Was it a What's fun show to work on? Were the boy, what were the boys like? The boys were amazing. What's your daughter's name? Uh, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Um, Drake and Josh was an amazing experience. The guys are so professional. You know how they say don't work with kids and, and animals. I've worked with both, and I believe that Drake and Josh were on set and knew their lines before I even got there that morning. Like they're that professional. Same thing with Miranda Cosgrove. Um, that is my family. Um, community is my family now, but before community, Drake and Josh was a place where I felt like I was home. You know, just a wonderful group of people. We would go to movies and bowling and that kind of stuff all in our off time. I still talk to everybody that worked on the show. It's just a great, great experience, and, and your daughter has picked a great show to love. That's very nice. Thank you. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. And last thing, would you give Ken Jeong a message for me? And just I tell will. Him, what do you want me to tell Ken? Please tell him, I am the master. That's all. <laughs> I will, he'll understand what that is. He will. He was on uh, Worst Week last season, and he was hysterical. And that's something I will he tell said. him that. All right, so folks, listen, Community, starring Joel McHale, Chevy Chase, and the lovely Yvette Nicole Brown, mm-hmm. airs every Wednesday night at Thursday. 9.30. Thursday. Thursday night. I'm sorry. I That's just, okay. I don't know what Thursdays, 9.30 on NBC. Um, you can catch episodes you miss at Hulu.com, and eventually you'll be able to order full seasons because I'm sure it'll be with us for some time. Yvette, thank you so much for being thank on Mr. Media. Really thank you, Mr. Time. Media. <laughs> All right. Bye. <laughs> take, Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. And folks, for uh, more interviews with your favorite NBC stars, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with the stars of Southland, Trauma, Chuck, 
Parks and Recreation, The Office, Mercy, and many more. Please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites. Whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, True Slant, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Vox, Blog Critics, Mediafly, Oddfeed.net, Blueberry, Zencast, Zimbio, Current, or Odeo. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. Or subscribe to Mr. Media's blog on the Amazon Kindle Reader. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate when you give up a piece of your day and spend it with us. Thanks for listening, everybody.